Hello, good morning. As we are discussing the mechanical injuries, and this is the second lecture on stab wounds. And I will continue discussion on the general features and the characteristics of the stab wound, which it appears. So the description of stab wound basically it includes the description of the entry of the stab wound, then the depth and direction of the stab wound and wound of exit. If the length of the weapon is such and the thrusting force is such that it exited from the uh, body, then there is uh, exit wound also. In entry wound, we discuss about the shape, size, margins or the edges, the angles, and the floor or the depth. And we describe all these features in the description of the wound. So starting with the, uh, continuing from the previous lecture, the general features of the step wound. So starting the lecture. If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And my channel name is Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Javed Iqbal Koko, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology. And as we are discussing the mechanical injuries and this mechanical injuries, we are discussing the sharp edge, sharp pointed injuries. And from the previous lecture, we are discussing the stab wounds and continuing with the general characteristics of the stab wounds. When we describe a stab wound, it includes the entry of stab wound, the depth and the direction of the stab wound, the wound of exit if present, and in the entry wound, we discuss the shape, which may be either the spindle or the elliptical, the size and the dimension, margins, angle, edges, and the base, and description about the clothes if the injuries are corresponding with the cuts or not, we describe the uh, situation which is present in the clothes. Then the force which is required to inflict the stab wound. And this may also result in variation in the direction when the stab is thrusted in, partially withdrawn, again thrusted. So the force required will also be, can be judged. So about the size of the stab wound, the size does not necessarily correspond to the breach, to the breadth or the length of the blade. That means the skin aperture is a little sometimes smaller than the breadth of the weapon itself due to the elasticity of the skin. In homicidal stab wound, it is rarely inflicted without some cutting at the same time. The knife may be pulled upwards or downward during the insertion or withdrawal, thereby causing an injury which is longer than the widest part of the blade. That means when the weapon is thrusted in, it can be moved upward or downwards or withdrawn. And in such movement, the entry wound may become widest and it may be wider than even the widest part of the blade. So the opinion about the size of the blade should be given with great care. Now about the margins of the entry wound, the margins of the strap entry wound are clean cut and are inverted. But some abrading or bruising of the edges may be seen due to thrusting force or if the weapon is not quite sharp. When a weapon such as knife or dagger is thrusted into the tissue with consider considerable force, 
the skin surrounding the wounds may be abraded or bruised by the hilt of the weapon that the weapon is thrusted up to the hilt and then that hilt that is the handle of the weapon that will cause the bruising or abrasion around the antebone and this would also suggest that the blade has been completely inserted up to the handle so the weapon should be examined while performing the autopsy to coincide the shape of the bruise or the abrasion around the stab wound with the hilt of the weapon sometimes the weapon is double edged knife and if it is double edged knife it produces a spindle or elliptical shaped wound which is broad in the middle and the angles are acute angle margins are clean cut edges are well defined and clothes may be driven into the bone and this is a diagrammatic representation of a spindle shape that in the middle it is broader and the angles they are acute sharply defined edges and if it is single edge knife like the kitchen knife which is routinely used in the kitchen this has one edge which is sharp cutting but the other end is blunt it produces a wedge shaped injuries the end which has the sharp end edge will produce an acute angle but the other which is the blunt edge will cause a small tear so this is a kitchen knife and the injury on one side there is acute angle on the other side there is a wedge shape and this is the closer view you can see the acute angle on the one side have with the sharp edge but the other end is obtuse not acute angle these are other diagrams of the kitchen knife injury stab wounds if the weapon is rounded pointed weapon that is ice pick needle and it produces circular injuries margins are little ragged and the usually the piercing are multiple there are multiple holes and if the weapon is pointed square shaped like screw driver it produces a crew shaped shape and margins are clean cut and the edges are well defined in these injuries the clothes can also be driven into the wound these are multiple injuries with the screw driver and if the weapon is two prong weapon like the dining fork it produces paired pattern of injuries and paired piercing holes will be seen this is a diagram of fork injuries the angles of sharp edge weapon now the about the angles of the stab wound in anti wound the sharp edge weapon will be producing acute angle but the blunt edge will produce obtuse angle if it has one cutting edge and the other end is blunt like the kitchen knife in double edged weapon sharp edge the both angles will be acute angle like this while in one edge sharp like i have also discussed before that one edge is blunt and the other edge is sharp it will produce uh, the acute angle with the sharp edge weapon and the blunt edge will produce a wedge shape injury this is the kitchen knife producing injury so regarding the depth of the stab wound the external examination of the stab wound will not give an idea about the depth of the injury depth is proportional to the thrusting force 
So the depth of the stab wound is usually greater than the actual length of the weapon because the thrusting force will compress the tissues and the weapon will enter deeper than the actual length of the weapon. This is the diagrammatic representation that this is the actual, on the right side showing the actual length, but on the left side, the thrusting force is compressing the tissue and the tip is exiting from the other side of the body. About the direction of the wound, it can be found by drawing a line between the entry and the exit wound, if any, but the exact depth and direction can only be judged at autopsy. Sometimes the weapon is thrusted at a single entry wound, but it is thrusted again and again in different directions by partially withdrawn and thrusting in another direction. Then again partially withdrawn and thrusting in, in another direction. So by partial withdraw, withdrawing the weapon and multiple pushes in various direction can be seen in various cases. The stab wound will either gape or remain slit shaped. This depends upon the location in the reference to the cleavage lines of Langer. These are the lines of tension which determined by the elastic and the collagen fibers in the dermis of the tissue. If cut is across the lines of the tension, it will give and those will be parallel with the slit. That if the tension lines are horizontal and cut is in the direction of vertical, it will give. So that's all about the lecture. The summary of this lecture is that we have continued the discussion of the stab wound. The general feature and the characteristics are they are discussed. And the definition and the direction, the characteristic, the shape, size, margin, angles, depth, they are also discussed in detail. And we have also learned about the various variations depending upon the thrusting force, the direction and the multiple entry modes can be seen. Thank you very much. This is all about the lecture number two on this step. Take care, Allah peace.